Well, hello, Secret Vaulters. We're here at uh, Aerospace Bristol, which is the home of where they have a Concorde. So let's go and have a look. And guess where we're at? Where we're at is right next to the Filton Control Tower. And that's all the buildings we went in before. So you can watch the video on the channel for the uh, for the, the thing we did over there. So, uh, yeah, that Control Tower is pretty funky, actually. It's just a real shame it's... Uh, there it is. I mean, you'd think these guys would sort of take it over so people could go up in the control tower and see it, but uh, yeah, there we are, look. Arrivals and departures. There we go. So, uh, yeah, here we go. So, Hi there. Hello. Just return visit. Thanks. Okay. Just the one? Yeah, thanks. That's oh, just the red arrow thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, cheers. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. It worked. Right. So basically, what I'm seeing here is they've taken up one whole hangar wing just for coming in which is a little bit hmm so yeah this is what we came to see this little this little beauty here so uh let's get my hat off Whoa. Oh, i need to use the loose before We're in, we're in, we didn't pay. <laughs> well, it, it's not exactly um, aircraft, but yeah. Let's get some model aircraft. Bristol box kite. Really? God, there's some, there's some flicker on that light. Bloody hell. Hang on, let me see if we can... Hang on. Okay, so we're filling it 50 FPS because we're going to get some flicker off the lights otherwise. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, this is what aircraft were made out of back in the day. Working tools, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, finally, we have some aircraft. Yeah. Bristol Fighter and Scout. Yeah, biplanes. they used to travel quite slowly so they needed double the double the lift that's a massive propeller all things considered and there's a little uh, little fin fan thing down there which would obviously drive your speed um, needle and they got it they did away with that because they stopped using propellers to do it and they used a vacuum tube uh, a venturi which um, which used to sort of change the air air pressure in the uh, in the airspeed meter, and that would provide a slightly less no moving parts solution. Hmm. 
I like the exhaust coming down there and trying to not uh, not get into the cockpit. Oh God! It's any trouble about museums, isn't it? Screaming kids. You come here to, to like you know soak in the, the wonder of all these things. He's just like, mummy, mummy. Yeah. I wonder if they do a day when you can come where there's like no children allowed. Uh, museums should do a day like that because it's honestly, it just frazzles my brain trying to sort of take anything in when you've got kids screaming. Mmm. Mmm, very nice, but... BAE 592, so it must have been in use at the airfield, that's why it's in here. British lorry. It was based at Brislington. There it is. It's a little uh, baby. Radial engine. Yeah. models of different aircraft that have been built here yeah so Bristol type 72 racer that one is sorry about the pulsating lights that's just because they've got crappy uh, crappy circuitry running the uh, running the lights Bristol type 84 bloodhound but biplane there he is and a Bristol type 53 bullfinch with a Jupiter engine. Yeah. Well, that's got some cylinders on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's twelve. Twelve cylinders. Oh my god. Yeah, and that one's twelve cylinders. They like their twelve cylinders. Looks like a glider. Yeah. What's that then? No, no, no. No, it, it has got an engine on it, but it looks like it's a powered glider. So what's it saying? Bristol Type 91 Brownie, featuring seven, featuring in seven important air races for light aircraft. Yeah. It also tested the lightweight Bristol Cherub engine. Oh, yeah. well, that's it. And Bristol Type 89 Jupiter Trainer, from 1924. It looks like they got that 12, 12 cylinder. They like their 12s. Bristol Type 83 Primary Trainer with a Bristol Lucifer engine. Look, it's got one, two, three, three cylinders. Ah. So obviously somebody took the piss out of them and uh, they said, right then, we'll show you. We'll have a three cylinder engine. Yeah. Yeah. Bristol Type 95 bag shot with Jupiter engine. Now that's a bit of a wacky, uh, wacky design. You've got a guy out the front who's on his own. And you've got the pilot who's in the middle. You've got somebody in the back. I mean, wonder what that was for then. It, it was used by the RAF for wing strength and stiffness testing. Right, okay. Bristol Type 120 GP biplane with a Bristol Pegasus engine from 1931. Again, I apologise for these uh, crap fluorescent lights. It really is pronounced, even though I'm shooting at 50 frames a second, it's like, nope. Oh dear. Bristol Type 138A. Nice big wing on that one. So it's not a massive museum, this one, must be said. Because you've got that area there, which is just where you come in, which they've kind of squandered. Um, and then you've got just from here down to the end, not it's beyond this thing. And then you've got from here to that wall down there, which is it's not that big. So when you consider it's twenty pounds to get in, and then so this is a Jupiter Jupiter um, six engine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. Yeah, got 460 horsepower at 1,870 RPM. Yeah, not bad. 
So uh, here we go from the back of these aircraft. Look. And the wires as stabilizers, um, adding extra support. That's something I had on my aircraft. Very similar. Pretty much exactly the same design on the uh, the controls, except my wires went inside the aircraft so that they wouldn't flap in the wind. Because if you get flappy wires, it makes your controls go up and down. And, 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 so it can it can be a bit of a pain. Hmm. Bristol. Bristol. We're running the Pocket 3 hack today, folks, so uh, we shouldn't get any problems with the overheating. Bristol Type 13 MR reconnaissance aircraft. Bristol Type 20. So there's loads of stuff they did, yeah? Now, this is a beast. Look at this. Bristol Type 24 Braemar Bomber, 1917. Look at that. Look at that. That is a beast. Hmm. But I can imagine what's in this section. Uh, a very big thing that we, we came here to see. So let's uh, wander on along. Oh yeah. Plans of the airfield when it was when it was quite small. A new pilot will test squadron here in Britain or the squadron in France. We'll be dealing with several different types of aircraft, including the Bristol Fighter, our great hope for the Western Front. You mechanics will need to know these aircraft inside out. You pilots will need to learn their individual foibles in the air. Some of you already had a play. Hey, it's bits of fuselage like we found in the Filton hangar. They could bring those over here, really. Oh, it's a uh, cockpit. Actual. This is an Airbus 319 wing section and an Airbus A320 from when they actually really made aircraft at uh, Bristol. So they've got a simulator ride over there which, uh, which you can go in. So yeah, it's not a lot holding stuff together is it when you think about it folks, look at that, that's it. That's what's holding the uh, holding your guts from exploding out at explosive pressure levels. Yeah. Mm. Aircraft parts, Ren Renshaw Equator. So. Measurement is vitally important when manufacturing aircraft, port, uh, aircraft parts. So it's a gauging system and it takes hundreds of 3D data points to compare the accuracy of parts made on the production line with the parts that have already been measured and was in within, within design specifications. So this little thing is, is like a 3D printer because it's got, um, I think it's like what they would, you know, like the rep wrap type 3D head. And basically that little arm comes down and it just moves in and touches and it's got incredibly fine measuring capabilities so there you go
We're getting into the. Uh, I always find these things very, very sad um, because they're, they're usually not very high res screens. Although that screen doesn't look like it's pulsating, so it might be a slightly more high res. I mean, in this day and age, it should be 4K minimum for this sort of stuff. Yeah. But I'm, to be honest, I've been on enough rides in my time to know that I'm never that impressed. Um, it's a prop, turbo fan. Yeah, that'll chop you up quite nicely if you uh, jump in it when it's turning. Although there was a gentleman who actually was working on an aircraft, got too close to the intake, got sucked in, got sucked in through those blades and uh, was ejected and fired out of the back of the aircraft and only suffered minimal damage. Which is pretty crazy when you think it. It's like I got sucked into a jet engine and survived. It's, there's one person out there that that, that is a, a true story for. Yeah. So now we've covered everything in section two. That's it, you know, that's the wall down there. So we've covered pretty much everything. Um, yeah. Oh look, they've got submarines in here for some reason. Yeah. Not sure why, but yep. This would probably be, you know, but it's BAE, I expect, made by BAE, so they said, oh, we don't want it, you can have it. But I would imagine that would be far better off in the uh, Submarine Museum down in Portsmouth. Now, here we are, now we're starting to get a bit more serious. So there's only one way you can walk throughout the whole of this, uh, this place, but here we are. It is the Harrier, GR whatever they are, GR something, yeah. And there's its engines, which can vector to allow it to, uh, let's say, two engines there, vectoring, so they can move backwards and forwards to tilt the aircraft forwards, backwards, fly it forwards, fly it backwards. Yeah, and this is, this is the beast that produces the uh, the jet thrust. Pegasus V stall engine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have a satellite. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, these actually look like they re are real, real solar panels. I was wondering if there's a mock-up, but it does actually look real. You can see parts of the fabrication, and there's its satellite dish on the top. It's a European Space Agency satellite or mock-up or something, I don't know. Yeah, don't know. Bits of it just look like they'd be made out of, uh, made out of model, model stuff, but what do I know? I, th I think it's a model. I think it's a model. Yeah. I just get the feeling that that is a model. Hmm. It's like a wooden, wooden model mock-up of the old uh, Concorde for going in a wind tunnel. Look at that up there, in the top. That thing kind of looks like your, your uh, SR-71s and your uh, possible Auroras. Yeah, what do you reckon? Aurora? Early Aurora type? Made in Bristol? So it's a delta wing wind tunnel model. Yeah, but where's what's the one at the top then? Yeah, Bristol T188 wind tunnel. 
Yeah. The fuel consumption of the T88 was so high that the aircraft failed to reach Mach 2 and the project was abandoned. But I mean, look at it though, folks. If they'd have got that, if they'd have got that thing going, I mean, that would, Jesus, it's got to be so loud. Yeah. Here we go. Is it real? Is it real? Is it real with, with look, little pull out telescopic aerials? Really? So when it when it launches into space, then who gets out to pull these little telescopic antennas in up? That doesn't make much sense. Model, model. These these things are those mirror tiles. They're what you get in bathrooms. That's that. What? Those things are mirror tiles. See what I mean? I mean, why would you be putting mirror tiles in space? So what the so the satellite can see itself? That, make, that does not make much sense. Yeah. Don't think B and Q mirror tiles would uh, would last very long in space, but there they are. So nice big engine. Yeah. Olympus five nine three. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, not very big. Some of these satellites. If that's to scale, it's not not too, not very big. Huh? Why do I get the feeling that looks like uh, a spy satellite? No, no, no. Intelsat, it's a communication satellite. Oh, it's a one quarter scale model. Yeah, this one, so one quarter. Yeah, and it's a model. Uh, and, it, and they actually do tell you it's a model. Does that one say it's a model? Yeah, that is a model. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was right, I was right, folks, it was a model. Uh, right, okay, what's this, a nuclear warhead? Looks like it. Cheveline, Filton Guided Weapons Team, was involved in the development of nuclear technology. Britain's Polaris Intercont Intercontinental Ballistic Missile System. System. Polaris. So that's. Yeah. Well, that's that's the actual warhead there. So the, the, the cap will fly off and that's the warhead. So then it just sort of like drops out and that's what goes down to ground and uh, causes all the damage. Yeah. Yeah, missiles. Yeah. Missiles. VL Seawolf. Hmm. Oh, nice. Look at that thing. It's like something of a sci fi, isn't it? You flick the switch on for something, like whichever way you want it to go, or something weird. God, never seen one of those. Rapier launcher. Yeah. There's a radome and a small radar radar receiver, so yeah. All your push buttons on the front. Don't want to be pressing the fire button standing in front of this puppy though. I probably do a Michael Jackson on your hairstyle. Whoa, look at that for a missile. I think I've seen some of these in uh in outside an RAF base in East Anglia as a, as a beast and that's its uh, avionics pod these are usually what go in fr the front of aircraft so they sort of they move back and forth like left right left right left right like a weather radar or bloodhound guidance no it's actually it, it would have been in in there then if this is the bloodhound, that's what would have been in the nose. Wow. Anti-aircraft missile. 
Mm. Lethality. Lethality. Economy. Do you really care about economy when you want to be lethal? I don't know. Seems like when they want to be lethal, they'll spend any amount of money. It's like, oh, we can't go to war because it's going to cost too much. Uh, I've never, never heard a government say that, but uh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Right, well, the one thing I haven't seen so far is the one thing I came here to see. So, I wonder where that is then. Uh, so, I hope it's in here, because it is exactly the reason I came. And it begins with a letter C. Again. Oh, you're not telling me they actually had cars in Bristol. You know, when they were making all these old aircraft, they actually had a car as well. Bloody hell, folks. Yeah. That's quite impressive. So what am I missing, then? What am I missing? I'm missing something. Because that's the wall. There's not a lot in here, is there, for £20. You know, there's one thing in here that might be worth £20, but it's quite small. When you compare this museum to somewhere like uh, um, some of the stuff in London, the uh, Imperial War Museum aircraft aircraft stuff, I mean, you're talking about hangers, you know, like 10, 10 hangers worth of stuff, you know. This is like one big hanger. But yeah. Mm. Oh. I, I hate to say it, but if the, if what I've come here to see isn't here, then uh, this has been a pretty short uh, short trip around. So where is the puppy then? Is it in that section over there, hidden behind those that big wall? It must be because why else would that be there? So how do you get to it? Hmm. Maybe you've got to go walk down the side and in. But yeah. I mean, if you're just browsing around, wanting to see lots of aircraft, it's a short, it's a short-term experience. This place, you know, you've seen it 24 minutes, and I'm, I'm kind of like, yep, that's cool. But we're kind of done now, so I'm just going to find out where, where the Concord is, and where's the Concord? Come on. Oh, I've given it away now, isn't it? Yeah, it's Concord. Concord, that way. Oh, is it in a different building? Oh yeah, it's in a different building. Right, okay. Oops. Apparently it's free to come to the, uh, to the cafeteria here. It's free to get in this bit. But they don't ask you for your tickets, so, you know. So if you, if you came in the back door, if you came in the back door, i.e. you walked round that way, came in the backside to the cafe and went in, just saying, just saying, oh hello. So they're, they're steering us down here then. This is it, Concord down here. It's hidden away though, folks. Hidden away. What? Whoa, my hat's just blown off. It's, it's busy, windy, windy. I'm going to have to put some mufflers on this uh, new Pocket 3. But look at the old uh, control tower. Uh, sad, sad to see stuff like that. And it's so close, they could just literally just put a little pathway to it, clean it up, and it could be visitable. Oh, here we go. Now, this is potentially, you would say, the only reason to be paying 20 quid to come here. Because 20 minutes for this is a little bit, yeah, 
So, uh, here we go. This is the uh, star attraction. All right, mate. Cheers. Thanks. Yeah, look at this then. Wow. They do video projection displays on the side of it, so no doubt if we stand here for long enough, some of that will kick in. People queuing up there, waiting to uh, to get in to have a look. It is quite. Oh, there we go. I knew it. Here we go. Ah, oh, I was going to say, there's a Christie or a Sony. It's a digital projection by who? Don't say. Might. Don't know. M Vision might be a cheap knockoff, folks. Chinese cheap knockoff. It's bright though. So, uh, it's amazing to think that one of these birds crashed and burned in France that time. That's very sad. I knew a second, well, I met a second officer who flew on one of these. And uh, I said, uh, why, have you got, why have you got a boat? Why have you got a canal boat? And he says, well, when you travel like, you know, the speed of sound, you, broke, you break the speed of sound going across, you know, two times a day. He said, you're happy just to do two miles an hour I can see that. Quite sedate. Yeah. I don't know, are these Olympus engines or they're Rolls Royce, but I can't remember. Hmm. It's a beast. Olympus five nine three, there we are look. Olympus. Rolls-Royce and Snecma. Sounds like a bloody snack company, doesn't it? Like Snecma, now with added nuts. So this is a test, test uh, equipment for the engines, so they can put them on run when they're in, in the factory being stripped down and checked. So, yeah. Oh, another video projector there, look. If, if we if we don't wait around very long, then hopefully we won't have to watch <laughs> the video pr projection on the side. Now that's that's small, really, isn't it? When you think about it, Look at the, that, that's fairly small. So obviously, engine technology had come on to the point where it was producing ridiculous amounts of power, you know, but not requiring the same size. We've seen the size of some other engines, other jet engines earlier on, and it dwarf this wow it is big do you know what i was expecting the, the cabin the cabin size to be really like a like a tiny little tube but it's it's actually bigger than i thought it was going to be that is impressive it is a lot bigger than i was expecting wow these uh, these things on on the back flip up so they close they go like that and they they sort of chunk like that and then they're thrust diverters, so thrust coming out gets blown forwards. So you can actually, you could in theory, when you're on the ground, if you have your thrust reversers turned on, you could actually reverse the aircraft. But uh, yeah, they, they they don't allow them to do that a lot of the time. It's very you know frowned upon, where they'd rather just push you back with a uh, with a whatever they call them, the pushing things, the pushers. That's right, they're called pushers. Yeah, but uh, yeah, these these things are your thrust reversers, but they just remain like that, you know, kind of 
very visible when in flight, you know. Yeah, amazing. So, yeah, folks. Yeah. Oh, that's like, that's an emergency tail. Don't hit your tail when pulling up. Because these things used to sort of pull up at quite a, a steep angle and there's a there's a risk because the the wheels are fairly far forward as they often are you know um but when you pull up the front because the front is huge pull that up you're going to tip the back down and scrape the back on the runway so that was like probably an emergency you know don't be silly you know, it's probably a little light in the cockpit and if that if these wheels make contact with the ground it just says twat you know It's absolutely huge. Fair play. Get the feeling this is why most people come here, is to see this. Uh, that thing there is an antenna. That little thing. It says hot. It might be some sort of exhaust. Oh, look water drain for the fuel system so there must be a fuel uh, fuel belly in here so there must be a bladder and that's where you test for water in the fuel and there's one there there's one there and we have to do this on uh, all types of aircraft before you go flying there is these little uh, little notches which are interesting don't know if they're designed to break up turbulence but um, yeah, there's a, some vent, venting system and another vent system there. Interesting. Hmm. It's nice, I can just point up. I don't have to blur out any kids now. Wow. Oh, here we go. Michelin, Michelin Air X. Yeah. Oh, fuel jet A1. So is that where you fill? Is that a filling port? Oh no, it's like. Uh, Avionics, there's a load of um, needles and stuff up there. Can you see it? So it's where you would uh, probably check all of the, the, the fuel. It says fueling control, so you check all of the bladders and how much fuel is in each one. So there's a water drain there, a water drain there, a water drain there. So I get the feeling this is just like tons and tons and tons of fuel in the body, probably as well as the wings. So, yeah. Don't forget not to be in Zoom. I don't know whether these, these, Jesus, Jesus, do they have, see what I mean? Kids, eh? Kids. Now we can point down now as they're all facing away from us. we go so the doors the doors would open and then the the leg would go up and then the doors would reclose Legs, lights have just all turned red. Interesting. So if we go up there, which I, I totally want to go in and have a look. Yeah. Got downward facing lights. And downward facing lights there. I don't know how that would 
help the pilot because you're so far forward and hidden in the nose there's no real way you might be able to see the end of your wing if you look out of the the pilot's window but hard to say so right we're going to go up and we're going to wait in the queue try and get in It's saying Christmas under Concord. So you can have a party in here, folks. You can actually have tables and chairs and and you can have a, a party. You can hire the place out. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so this is where we go up. Start to look over the wing. I'm, I didn't really appreciate when I when I've seen the Concorde before. I didn't really really appreciate that these wings bend down. I thought that the Concorde's wings were just flat, but they actually curve. They like they curve over. They bent over instead of being perfectly straight. They sort of bend at the end. So that's interesting. Can you see? I never realised that before until coming here. There's a curve off. So that's interesting. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. So this is where you start queuing. Oh, there's more stuff up here. Now, what's the time? Because it's four o'clock, it shuts. So I've got to start getting in fairly soon. You see, it doesn't, it doesn't appear so much that they've got the curve. And look at this one here. It's it's more flat again, but the final one has this dro drooping wing, which interesting. Yeah, so the chap who was an engineer used to sit in that seat and look at all these dials. That was his job, he was the engineer. Now, they often don't have engineers these days on aircraft because the uh, computer flight systems take care of all of this and it's all just displayed to you up on the front screen if there's an issue or a problem. But yeah, this is when you had three, three pilots. Well, you know, because the engineer, I believe, was also trained uh, to a certain degree as a pilot um, but yeah two actual pilots and one engineer those were the days eh folks hmm so you got some footage of what it's a computer simulation they're showing and look at some of these mouses on the screen as well oh the mouse has gone away Oh, and all the trees have just drawn in. Look, you know, um, this is actually showing you what it would look like to land at Filton, because that's the River Severn out there. Sorry about the flickering, but uh, yeah, wacky uh, video technology, you see, folks. But that's the River Severn. I've actually flown over there in my own light aircraft and uh, flown directly overhead Filton because it's not a designated airfield anymore. So you can do, but that was the view of Concord coming home to where it was, uh, where it was from. And it doesn't look, it doesn't look big from this distance, but that's a pretty big runway. You know, when you're coming in fast, a big runway becomes small. I'd say that's high myself, but what do I know? He's just dipped it down like Really? You're gonna smack it at the ground, do you? Oh you you he's definitely too far over the threshold. No, nah, that's a go around. That's a go around. No, you ain't gonna get that in, mate. Bollocks. 
bollocks. No, it doesn't travel at 10 miles an hour. I don't believe that. There's no way they'd have got that on the ground like that. These are some of the different seats. They even had secret, secret vault seats here, look, folks. Yeah, yeah. And uh, something for the um, les 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 sexuals amongst us. Mm. So that's the exit when you come out. Oh, so we're just gonna have to do the queue, I'm afraid, folks. We have to do it. Maybe take a little look out the window before we go. Joanna Lumley. Yes, I flew on Concorde often. Fab plane. Joanna Lumley approves. So let's have a look where we are in. Uh, so those, those are the aircraft hangars we've just been in. Yeah. Definitely a lot bigger than I expected. Yeah. Do you think there is a place for supersonic passenger planes in the future? Yeah, definitely, but uh, they ain't going to be electric, I can tell you that. Yeah. 
up to New York. Breakfast? Yeah, why not? I'm on Concord. <laughs> it's all right. I've got the right attitude. <laughs> Three of us, yes. Madam, you're coming to Am I? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do I believe I've done it? I hope he gets it. Now we have to all three out of these don't touch it. Like, no, we've got no fuel in the car, so we won't make it. I know, right? It took six months to run that. It was 30%. Was it? Was it? And so people who already knew it to fly. Well, exactly. You had to be senior flight. Right. So you had to have aircraft. So I watch your head here. Here you go. Yeah, well, well, there's a lot of people. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what about that then, Dad? Well, we'll see here. Well, we're going to move. Yeah, we're going to move. I've got these in my house to stop me banging my head. And they're just there for a They're just doing a bamboo, so people like me. Toilet. You can see what it looks, it looks like inside you know, when you go further up. Right, sir. Thank you. Mind your head. Okay. Down as far as that plastic door. Okay. Okay, thank you. Ooh, my neck. Look, do not obstruct. You've got all your fuse fuse bays, both sides. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's it, don't walk into the plastic. But that's the uh, that's the engineer station. And that's that's where the front is. So very interesting. Oh. Right. Oh. Okay, old oh, coffee machines. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. So uh, probably food compartments. Down as far as that plastic door. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. That's actually a toilet there. Look. Toilet's occupied. Ah, oh, this is it. Yeah. Funky black seats, look. That's proper. Oh, look. Tell you your, uh, your stats. Yeah, look. Uh, minus 41 degrees. 1,083. Yeah. 700 miles an hour is Mach 1. So, yeah. It's actually not too bad. Two seats either side. Not bad at all. Oh my god, I'm actually on Concord. Could never afford it in real life, but yeah, here I am. There's very little storage and stuff, was there? Well, yeah, it's just a Reason, Not many years, yeah. Glass a tiny toilet. That much, That's yeah, proper yeah. tiny. Look, they it give you a rose and <laughs> another toilet. Oh. Not going to get off the ground with that, mate. Yeah, more toilets. See, so it goes back a long way. A very thin, long aircraft. Yeah. But that's it, folks. That's the amazement. That is the amazement that is Concord. Right. Come in the back way, have you? Yeah. yeah, there's a there's a queue down there, so you'll be going back out the wrong way if you go that way. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> That's the way to do it, isn't it? Just walk in, walk in the exit way. <laughs> Wish I'd done that now. Wouldn't have had to have waited. Well, there you go, folks. Who'd have thunk it?
Who'd have thunk it? Yeah, it is fascinating. I've always wanted to see that. And uh, now I have. My life is complete. Yeah, Concord. Come and see it in Bristol. Maybe uh, maybe one day the, the prices will come down a bit. But yeah, it was good fun. You know, good fun just to see it in person. And let's hope, let's hope that in this world they bring back supersonic flight. It needs to happen, folks. So goodbye from this old bird. And uh, yeah, whoa. This is just a very small section and we're gonna come straight out. Um, we're not even gonna go back inside the other building. We are going to walk back to the car. So this is basically the end. Remember, if you hated this video, click um, like. And if you never wanna see any more videos from me again, click subscribe. Yeah. So this is a different uh, advanced supersonic transport model. Swept wings again. Yeah. Oh, what the hell? NASA's experimental supersonic aircraft. It's not. It's not hard to go supersonic. The the trick is to be able to do it whilst not uh, jettisoning all your fuel within thirty minutes. Um, that's the real trick. So, so well, folks, it is a goodbye from me, and it is a goodbye from her. So, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. But, but, shall I do it? No, no, I don't do that shit. What I do instead, what I do instead, is I lose my hat. I seem to have misplaced my hat, but yeah. Where's my hat gone? Oh, have I lost my hat? Maybe I left it in the car. No, I didn't leave it in the car. What have I done? Oh, I put it in my side pocket. That, that means I was not concentrating, folks. That's definitely a, why did I do that? But it's windy, so maybe that was why I did it. But yeah, it's like, I've lost my hat. Oh my God. Yeah, you can get out this way. And there's a gate, which if it happens to be open, down, now, 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 just saying, because you can come here for free and you can go to the, uh, the cafe and as, as you've seen they're not 100% strict on checking the tickets so uh, thank you to that viewer that sent me their ticket <laughs> which I used to get in for free because this is a secret vault and uh, yeah I probably would have tried uh, blagging in my way in there going I've got 60,000 viewers and I will advertise your your place let me come in for free and they they sometimes go for that sort of stuff but you never know anyway right this time I'm off bye